Hey, Happy Campers, Todd here at Great American RV Superstores, and today we're going over our standard suburban water heater. So before we get into operation, we want to talk about safety real quick. This is a gas appliance, so you want to make sure that your safety devices such as your CO detector and your smoke detector are working properly. And we also want to make sure that you're getting a yearly gas check done on your unit and this ensures that you don't have any leaks that you may not know about. Getting into operation, as I talked about, this is a gas and electric water heater on this particular one. Suburban has several different models of water heaters. Uh, you'll have different gallon sizes, which will be indicated by the number that's in that model number. In this case, it's a SW6. This is a six gallon tank. Uh, we also see here we have gas and electric on this one. Some of them come with only gas. Your operation will be the same on that one as it will on this one, except you won't have the electric option. So starting off with from the outside, we can see we have several components here we'll go over. This is your pop-off valve. It is a pressure relief valve. If the temperature goes over 210 degrees Fahrenheit, or if it reaches over 150 PSI inside that tank. Now, generally when you first start, you're gonna have a small air pocket in here. And that air pocket is important because it will keep this from dripping. As the water expands inside that tank due to the heat, you can, you can expect that water to eventually start dripping out of here. And we're talking little small drips and that's very common for that to happen. One thing we can do to prevent that leaking if it's consistent, just go turn your hot water on inside your unit with your city water or your water pump just completely shut off. And that will bring that water level down to a certain point and give you that air pocket back. Now that will begin to eliminate over time during use of that unit. And you'll reduce the possibility of that pop-off valve dripping. But that is a very important component. And if you ever see it, just do a quick release. That's normal. It's getting rid of all the pressure inside that tank versus that tank actually exploding and causing a leak or damage inside your unit. Moving down, we have our thermostats right here. One is controlling the 110 side and one is controlling the 12 volt side of it. And if there were ever a problem, one thing that you can check, and we'll go over this again in diagnostics, is just walking over here, simply pushing either one of those black buttons and seeing if you hear a slight click noise behind it. And that is resetting that thermostat. Here we have our gas valve. That gas valve will open up whenever you hit the gas operation. It will allow gas to come through this tube right here, mixed with some oxygen. And we have our igniter that will ignite that gas and you will start to have the burn inside that tube. Sounds like a little jet engine and up here would be your exhaust where that's gonna come out and that would come out of your vent on the exterior. Down here we have a heating element that'll work on our electric side. That heating element is inserted into that tank and it'll heat the water. So that's all our exterior components. Uh, on the interior side, you'll have several valves on the back of it and you also have your control board. Now let's talk about power sources for this. It all works off of 12 volts. And then if you choose gas, it'll work off of your gas. And if you choose electric, it'll work off of the 110 side. So we have three elements that we need. So just starting off with the functionality of it, if we wanted gas, we go flip that gas switch on, and this is gonna initiate the gas valve, and we're gonna eventually start to hear a ticking noise, and it's gonna try to ignite that gas that's in there. Now, if it doesn't light immediately, it should go through three cycles. And once that cycle is complete, if it hasn't lit, you'll get a light in there that says DSI fault. And it's gonna stay on and you're not gonna hear the water heater try to do anything anymore. It will not try to light again unless you turn that gas switch off and turn it back on and initiate the cycle again. You will immediately see that DSI light come on in the beginning and it's not gonna turn off until that system lights. On the electric side, we'll hit that electric switch on the inside and this element will turn on and it will begin to heat up. Big important thing that we wanna keep in mind, no matter which element we use, gas or electric, is to make sure we have water in that tank before we get started. If we don't have any water in there, it will burn up your element and you'll have to replace it. A lot of customers ask, can I use both? Yes, absolutely. You can use both at the same time. Many people use that whenever they're taking showers back to back. And whenever you're done, just click one of them off so you're conserving a little bit of energy or gas. Now, if you have a 50 amp service, 
You can use electric all you want. If you have a 30 amp service, you might want to turn the water heater to gas option so you're using less amperage and that's less of a chance that you're going to trip the breaker either inside the camper or on the power pole. Let's touch on a little bit of diagnostics. Starting off with the gas operation, if we've initiated that gas and we've heard the system try to ignite and it's going through that clicking sound but it never ignited, it went, turned it off, turned it back on and it still doesn't ignite, and then the first thing you want to do is, of course, make sure that your propane is on, that your tanks are full, and then go over to your stove top, light your stove, and make sure you have a nice blue flame. There's a little small orifice in here that is only going to let out a little bit of gas at a time. So if you have air in that system from storing it, it's going to take a while for that to come out. So going over to our stove, it's a much quicker that purge of air. Once we purge that air out of the stove, go back to your water heaters panel, click that gas on, and give it another shot. On the electric side, if we notice that we're not heating on 110, we want to make sure that our breaker panel is on out by our power pole. We want to check our breaker panel on the interior and make sure that that is on as well. And some suburban units have a little on-off switch down here in the bottom corner. This particular one doesn't have it, but it's something that you want to look for on some models. If it has a little black on-off switch, you want to make sure that's on as well. Now, if we go to our water heater and nothing is happening, the lights on the switch panel are not lighting up, the water heater just isn't doing anything. Then we want to go to our batteries, make sure that our batteries are charged, you have a good solid 12 volts, or that our charging system is kicked in, the, the converter from our power pole, and that it's putting out and charging at 13 and a half volts. And we also want to go to our fuse panel on the interior, which is generally located near our breaker panel, and check and make sure that the fuse for the water heater is not blown. We also have our 12 volt and 110 thermostats that we talked about right here. We can go and push in and see if we reset those. That may be an issue, it may not be. Uh, from there, there's a circuit board on the interior that uh, could possibly have gone wrong. It could be the element that's bad or gas valve that's bad. There's several different options that can happen. But if we've tried all those other simple diagnostics, from there we want to get in touch with one of our dealerships and ask for service and try to schedule an appointment so we can get it figured out. So let's touch on some maintenance. We want to make sure that we're flushing this tank out once a year. So when we do that, we're pulling out our drain plug. And as I mentioned, this anoid rod, this is an opportunity to inspect it. So if this anoid rod is, is deteriorated uh, about 75%, you want to go ahead and just replace it. If it's deteriorated all the way down to the metal rod in the center, absolutely replace it. These are like 20, 25 bucks. So if you're about to do the maintenance on your tank, just go buy one, that way you have it handy, and if it's bad, slap a new one in there and you're good to go. Make sure when you do, you have these threads wrapped with Teflon tape so you can reduce any leaking out of that tank. So while this system is flushing out, we want our city water or our water pump to be on, pulling from our fresh tank, and just have water steady flowing out of here. You can open this pop-off valve right here and allow it to flow out a little bit faster. They also have these little spray nozzles that you can stick in there and push any debris or calcium buildup that you might have inside that tank as well and flush it out really good. So we've drained that tank out. When we put that plug back in, we want to make sure that we fill that tank up with water so you don't forget because remember that can damage our elements whenever we turn them on if we don't have any water in the system. Next thing we want to do for maintenance is that burner tube. Remember we talked about dirt divers and spiders and all that stuff can build nests up in here regardless if, if we have those bug screens on the exhaust or not they can still find their way in. So always, always blow all this out. If you have an air nozzle, you can hook up to an air compressor.